I'm just searching for fossils. <laughs> Where? Who's that? Who's that? Who's still at me? What? Hey, what are you doing over there? Wait, hey, you! Hey! Hmm. Well, I'll just check over here. <laughs> what? There he is again! Just searching for me! Hey, 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 you! Oh, hey, hey! He must know that I'm looking for fossils. Hmm, I'll find one. There he is again! Uh, wonder what he's looking for over there. Hmm? Over there! He spotted us! Oh no, spotted me again! I think that blue fairy guy is a bit paranoid. Hmm. I give up. Gus, what were you doing? I was outside looking for fossils, but some other guy saw me, I think. Who? This other guy noticed me. I think he was trying to throw me off my trail. Gus, I just think he wanted acorns. He can have as much corn as he wants. I'm looking for a fossil. Do you even know anything about fossils? Um, well, I know more than he does, because all he's looking for is corn. <laughs> Oh, boy. Huh. Most of the time when you hear the word fossils, you may think of the remains of animals, even dinosaurs, that have become part of rocks over millions of years. But before we start talking about fossils, we need to learn what paleontology is. A paleontologist studies all forms of life that existed many years ago. Most paleontologists study fossils. They very carefully extract fossils from the earth and report where and how the fossils were discovered. And this is important information to learn so that we can learn more about life and all things from the past. So what exactly are fossils? Well, the actual word fossil comes from the Latin word fossilis, which means dug up. Fossils are dug up, which can also be called excavated from sedimentary rock. And uh, hey, I might as well mention that if you want to know what sedimentary rocks are, you can go watch our rock video. It's actually going to be in the description below. Fossils are the history of the Earth's prehistoric animals, plants, fish, and more that lived thousands, even millions of years ago. Wow. So now you might be wondering, how does something become fossilized? Well, first, did you know that fossilization is actually not very common? And the reason is that bones usually decay quickly once an animal dies. And if this happens, there is nothing left to actually turn into a fossil. So when a paleontologist does find a fossil, it is very significant. Very significant? Yes. Well, when they do discover a fossil, they can see how or why they became a fossil. Sometimes the body of the dead animal will settle oh. or sink into the dirt or mud. Maybe that's why your mom doesn't like to swim in lakes. You see, parts of the animal's remains will decompose over time, but the harder, stronger parts, like their teeth or bones, will not break down as fast, because these harder parts stay in the mud for a very long time and more and more mud starts pushing down on top of the animal's remains. Minerals from the dirt, rock, and other debris that surrounds it transforms the remains into a hard fossil over many, many, many years. And the fossil is basically a stone copy of the animal's remains. And fossils can also form through petrification. This is a process that happens when minerals replace previously living material. And many times wood and bone are petrified, and so are many dinosaur fossils. Hey, guess what? Did you know that fossils aren't actually made of bone? What? Are you sure? I'm sure. Wow. She's right, Gus. Fossils can look like bone, but they are not actually bone. Fossils are formed from rock 
which are shaped exactly the same way as the remains that were originally there. The fossil is the same shape as the original object, but is more like a rock or a stone. Did you know that we can only learn more about dinosaurs by studying fossils? In fact, fossils might even show evidence of their prehistoric activities. And even though we have a lot of information about dinosaurs, most of them did not fossilize. They actually decomposed and have been lost from the actual fossil record. Many paleontologists guess that only a very small amount of the dinosaurs that ever lived will be discovered as fossils. Here are some of the most common ways that animals or plants become fossils. Amber. That's right. Sometimes bugs, insects, or small parts of a plant are found preserved in amber. And amber is a gluey resin from trees. It eventually hardens into amber when animals or plants get trapped in it or stuck inside. Next, they have to be frozen. That's right, Quinn, they have to be frozen, because some fossils are actually preserved in ice, and if the ice doesn't melt, the fossil can be protected and frozen for thousands of years. Large fossils like the woolly mammoth have been discovered inside glaciers in the Arctic. And in really dry areas like a desert, a fossil can be created through mummification. This is when the dead animal or living thing quickly dries out. That must smell terrible. And because it is so dry and has little moisture, the remains can be preserved for thousands, even millions of years. Petrification. Petrification happens when the remains are exposed to minerals over a long period of time. Petrification can preserve hard or soft parts and slowly replaces that living matter with silica, calcite, or pyrite. This is what actually forms the rock-like fossil. Dinosaur bones are mostly petrified. Wood is often found to be petrified too. Hey, guess what? Did you know that even poop can be a fossil? Uh -huh. Excuse me, sir. That's right, Quinn. Poop fossils are actually called coprolites, and they can tell us what the animal or dinosaur ate. Hey, guess what? Did you know that the first fossils were discovered in 1819 by William Buckland? That's true, Cadence, and the largest dinosaur fossil ever found was nearly 112 feet. It was a dinosaur named the Argentinosaurus, and it was discovered in central Argentina. And fossils have been found on every continent on Earth, including Antarctica, even at the top of Mount Everest, which is the highest point on our planet. Well, your planet. I don't know what planet I'm from. And fossils also show and prove that most of the Earth had been covered by water at some time. So what did we learn from fossils? Well, we've learned that fossils can give us a lot of information from the past that we would have never learned without them. Fossils have taught us so much about how our world used to be, how it looked, and what roamed around, and what they ate. That's pretty cool. Well, hey, guess what? Now we know all about fossils. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Bye. And say goodbye to that squirrel trying to throw me off. <laughs> we win. Mm.